the market is kind of tap dancing in front of us. While the dollar still gets rejected, still shows you the downside, you're watching volatility in the crypto market. When you do look at the commodities market, it shows you silver is pushing to the upside, gold is trying to push to the upside, which makes sense when the dollar drops. But now here we are looking at the crypto market. This is Bitcoin. What are you seeing? We have a micro trend line above which we are for now. The daily close, however, shows you something. We had higher level of volume, but the price didn't end up to the upside. But yes, that long wick to the 70,000 shows you there are buyers interested in buying this asset to push the price higher, which is a good news. So we go on a three day and we are like, okay, one negative candle is now taking two positive candle to erase that. As of now, you haven't done that. You didn't complete it yet. So in next three days, if we don't break 71, this is now going to be very strong resistance for Bitcoin. Now, you take that to XRP USD, you take that to XRP Bitcoin, and you're like, okay, the momentum is still to the downside. Even though Bitcoin is slowing down at a resistance, it hasn't literally broken to the upside for a couple of months, XRP is still bleeding against Bitcoin. Yes, for sure, when you do zoom a little bit out, XRP is on that macro support. From that point, we have started bull run many times before. And most likely, we may start the next one here too. You cannot deny that fact. But the trouble is, when would that exactly start? This is a game of patience and it is very hard for everyone to focus on it. Because when you see market breaking out on the other side, when you see some of these coins are going up 70%, 80%, 50%, 30% a day, right? That kind of shows you there is a lot of momentum happening in mem coin side. This is the mem coin side of things which I'm showing you. Now you look at DeFi, you like again see something starting to take momentum. So inside the same market, you're now watching different segments, different streams taking money away from different assets. On a micro level, Bitcoin dominance kind of shows you it is in a micro pattern like this way it is bouncing off. But what exactly does that show you on the macro? Welcome to the Sinovic Investor family, where the normal retail guys get to learn how to become the next top 10 person of this world. While you see a lot of different coins trying to break through, show you that volume is entering there and they are pushing higher, you need to keep an eye on, say, which of these assets really interests you. So when the Bitcoin dominance is showing you it would like to break to the downside. So you look at this and you're like, okay, it is retesting this zone, but it is still on this structure. Say, I'm looking at the double top possibility on the Bitcoin dominance chart daily, right? If you do break the point here, which is close to like 53.95, 54, that becomes a double top. So now we can look at like 51, 50 to the downside. That's positive. If you're a trend line guy, you are looking at this and saying like, we already broke to the downside. This should go to 51. In any ways, that's positive. Because say you are a macro guy, you're looking at the weekly. What do you actually see inside this chart? Because the moment you actually move on to that weekly chart, it shows you there was a trend line we broke that, we retested that, right now we are getting rejected, right? That's actually a good stream to look at because even if you are looking at the most 
focused, optimistic one or the conservative one, you have now broken to the downside, which is very positive. The MACD is suggesting it is breaking to the downside, crossing to the downside, volume is to the downside, which argues Bitcoin dominance should go down. So this is that point where we are looking at XRP asking the question, okay, Bitcoin dominance is going down, which means more money is entering altcoins than Bitcoin. Is XRP one of them? Daily chart kind of shows you, you didn't do much. You're still at this point where you are not moving up or down. It's just sideways. You go on a three-day chart and the momentum is starting to look in your favor. And that's positive. Remember, this cross to the upside of MACD, I told you, watch for something like this. <clears throat> Here we are, we finished that kind of a move. It was choppy. To understand that, you can put the chart on a Hikinashi and it shows you this. We're breaking to the upside. We're trying to break the moving average. The MACD is positive. The RSI is trying to turn negative to neutral. If you turn neutral in the RSI, that allows the price to breathe, to push to the upside. Maybe 0.6, maybe 0.7. But now you slowly move on to the weekly chart. We're starting to turn positive. We are bouncing off from a support level that in itself is bullish. The trouble comes in when you go on a macro, the monthly chart. You don't have a green month yet. I mean, in comparison, when you're taking in, say, Ether on the same, on the monthly, what you are watching here is few consistent months of bullish moves in the market. Even if you take that on Bitcoin, you're watching something same. Even if you go on Ether, you're watching something same. You go on some micro caps and they sh already show you like they have been doing exceptionally well. Just this one month is in the corrective phase. So you now zoom in. You want to see where the correction is going to reach that end. You kind of got one weekly candle, which is in green after a few weeks of red. So that's XEC, a micro cap payments token on a weekly chart, Hikanashi. Giving you the idea last time when that happened, that was the local bottom. So if that's true, payments, the small cap payments, it's starting to attract cash flow. What's next? Medium cap payments. So if you do see this one turning into green on a weekly XDC, that's a medium cap payments, that's again positive. So the cash flow comes into the small cap, then enters into the medium, then to the large cap like XRP, XLM and others. XLM kind of shows us something beautiful. It had few weeks of negative movements. So XLM on a weekly shows you. It just had a weekly candle close in green. The next one is already in green. So we may come back up to 0 0.119, 0 0.12, which is good. You're still respecting this range. The support turned into the resistance, turning into a, another support. So payments are still holding on to a macro support. You're not watching it breaking through to the downside. Remember, this support inside XRP on a weekly showing you it's been there for like 749 days, say 750 days of one range acting as a support resistance in which it has turned into a support from last 329 days. So see, half of that time, it's been a support. So a bounce off from that level should not surprise you. And getting that is important. Now, the primary thing here in the market is Bitcoin, right? So just like what we discussed about Ether, now look at Bitcoin. It's interesting, like the MACD is crossing to the upside here. Last time it did that, it went up. But just before it crossed, you had this fake movement on top of the moving average. Okay, fine, fine. We're watching something similar here. To understand the momentum side of things, I put that on to a Heikinashi chart. And it shows you clearly the Heikinashi is in green. 
the MACD is trying to cross to the upside. If you're going back a year, two, three, wherever you want to go, and you're looking at whenever the MACD crosses, the RSI is above 55.60, price is above the moving average, what end up happening? That's very bullish scenario, right? Now, if you move on to a weekly, this is where you start to ask the question, okay, the price came back to the all-time highs region, but the RSI didn't. So you clearly have a negative divergence starting to develop, not confirmed. Remember, the price faked out here, somewhat close, like, you know, $60,000, saying I'm going to make a negative divergence, but it didn't, right? So unless the price shows you that I confirm a negative divergence, it's still up. The direction is to the upside or you are flirting with your roof. Fine. So you now go on Ether, put on the same idea because that kind of guides the altcoin market. And here we are looking at that. Weekly is suggesting I'm going to cross back to the upside, the MACD for Ether on a weekly. And the RSI on a weekly is saying I'm above 70 go back each and every time when you are in a bull market in between that bull market when you get these kind of moves the rsi is re-entering 70 plus macd is crossing to the upside what ends up happening the exact scenario on a weekly goes back on the october 2020 range where you get the MACD doing the same, RSI doing the same, and the price moved from $380 to all the way up to like, you know, $5,000, say $4,500. So you literally did a 10, 15x movement. Say that's a decent move you can look in the market. Now, this time it won't be 15x, maybe it's a 5x, but that still puts bit uh, ether where $12,000, $15,000 mark. That's a strong rally, it's a great rally, which means you'll actually observe the total market running crazy. This is the DeFi. You put that on the momentum side of things and look at it. Three days breaking to the upside of the moving average. So this is total DeFi on a three day looking using a Heikinashi chart, clearly giving you a very bullish narrative, which is hidden bullish divergence. MACD crossing to the upside on a three-day daily RSI is entering the all-bought region. So you have a lot of different things happening, but all of them points you towards the bullish side of things. Yes, on a micro, you are watching some negative sentiment. You may actually get 5, 10, 15% drop, which you can actually use for your advantage to ride it. Because now on a photo chart, this is starting to develop a negative divergence, which means a micro leg to the downside to test this bottom. As you can see, total DeFi coming back to 100 billion is going to be a great opportunity in my eyes. Maybe I'm wrong, but this is what I'm going to use. This is what I'm going to execute, right? But if you want to really see which assets I'm buying, which assets I'm rotating, you can be in the SI family where you get all the updates on all the assets breaking higher, targets, patterns, red flags, everything, and thousand plus members are readily taking benefit of that. If you want to join the family, use the link in the description below in YouTube or in the bio on Twitter. So guys, if you haven't smashed the like button yet, I request you do that for me. I'll meet you on the next video. Bye for now.